All right, so let's get into it. Dame Dollar puts the Oklahoma City Thunder to bed. And I'm telling you, Rob Parker, we're going to get to Dame. We're going to get to the clutch shot, so on and so forth. But let's hear it first, and then I'm going to make my point. Dame into the front court, 10 seconds. Lillard now in front against George, 5 seconds. George backing up, Lillard doesn't want to pick. Dame going for the win, a three-pointer for the game. Dame Lillard drops a 37-footer in the grill of Paul George. In his grill. Don't don't lose sight of that. In his grill, okay? And I'm going to throw something else in Paul George's grill, Rob Parker. Paul George, and and look, let me just throw get this out of the way. He's a human being. If he's happy in Oklahoma City, this is so against enjoys, what you've always said. No, no, no. This is Hold unbelievable. On, just listen to me. You don't even know where I'm going. I do. He enjoys the fishing, the the community. That's fine. So he's happy there. That's good. In that sense, of course, you make the choice you want. I'm speaking strictly in basketball terms, strictly from the standpoint of wanting to win a championship, of trying to win a championship, of putting yourself in the best position to win a championship. And I'm telling you, Rob Parker, Paul George made a mistake last summer when he signed to stay in Oklahoma City instead of joining LeBron James and his hometown Los Angeles Lakers. Don't even try to tell me I'm wrong. Chris Broussard has never been more wrong since he said OKC was going to the Western Conference Final. Stop oh, that it. was a couple days ago. Or when he no, said no, that. No, oh, all you, oh, be quiet. It's my time. No, but it's argue, my time. Argue my point. It's my Don't time. Argue the pick. Argue what I it's said about. It's my time. Argue what I said about Paul George making a mistake. How? It do, what you're saying makes no sense. Just two days ago, you had him going to the Western Conference Finals. Now you're saying he made a total mistake. How, Chris? It doesn't add up. Let me give you my calculator. Just, it makes no sense what you're saying now. You're doing a revisionist history. You're, same, you're the same guys. All the LeBron fans who poo-pooed Paul George, we don't want him. We're glad he that? didn't come. Who said? When did I say they all Paul said, George? That, not you. They all said it. The fans. Well, it's about after me. He, after he spurned. LeBron James and the Lakers. We didn't want him anyway. That's what they said. And now they have the nerve after things went sour with OKC to say, see, see, you should have come to L.A. And this way he wouldn't even have had a playoff series. He could have just been out of the playoffs like LeBron. He didn't make a mistake. He's not in a toxic environment that's going to uh, damage his basketball career. Like those guys, those young guys who were damaged this past year, being around the LeBron nonsense that went on. And the Magic Johnson, and the Genie Buss, and the Rob Palenka, and all the other nonsense that went on in L.A. He didn't make a mistake. He's where he wants to be. He not only has a teammate that he likes, whether or not he played well or not, he likes it and... He gets the best barbecue in this country. Are you done? Uh, you're welcome, Can America. Can we turn off the American music? He, that, that didn't even deserve the – what should I call that music? What is that? It's Hail to the Chief. Hail to the Chief. That didn't even deserve Hail to That's the Chief. That was a good Chief. speech. No, it wasn't. It was a good he speech. Had passion. It wasn't. You And you just made it worse with your barbecue statement. What? Because Oklahoma City is not known for barbecue. Yes, it is. Not Kansas more than City. Texas. Not Kansas more than City. Kansas City. But but, but they have barbecue. Not more than St. Skip Louis. Skip Bayless's family had a barbecue spot. Stop it! Rob Parker, you are so wrong. First of all, you're wrong about... His career being ruined. Was Kyrie Irving's career ruined when LeBron James went there? I think not. All Kyrie Irving did was get to play in the finals for four straight years. All Kyrie Irving did was get to be placed in an opera, in the position to hit one of the greatest shots in NBA history. 
And Kyrie Irving realized that this year when he called LeBron and that apologized. That had nothing to do about that. That had nothing to do about that. Did it you ruin Dwayne up. Wade and Chris Bosh's yes, career? Yes. Really? Yeah, it did. It got him two championships. Chris Bosh is a, is a, is a, is a thought of as a frail uh, player who was a fringe player after he joined LeBron. He's not think of, he's not thought of as fringe the same player. Fringe players do not he's make the All-Star player. team. Chris Bosh made the All-Star team every year with LeBron. Brian James. So stop it with the revisionist history. Chris Bosch is going to be a Hall of Famer largely because of the championships he won with LeBron James. How many he could have kept stayed in Toronto, put up his 22 and 10 and gotten pounced in the first round every year. But no, he is regarded it, now it as hurt, a champion. It didn't hurt Tracy McGrady. He got into the, the Tracy Hall of Fame. Tracy McGrady was a heck of it, a lot better than Chris Bosh. It didn't hurt Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady was a heck of a lot better. It didn't hurt him. He didn't, he, was, he, didn't he didn't win Jack. Because he was better than Bosh. But he didn't win anything. But that's you can't compare Tracy McGrady Brady and Chris Bosh, because Tracy McGrady was a top five player at one point. And you know, Bosch Chris was Bosch, never that. Chris Bosh was one of those players who could have been if he would have stayed no, he his couldn't career. Have. He could. You don't know that. Chris. Yeah, I do know it. No, you don't. I watch You're the game. Guessing. I don't just look at the box score. You're scores. guessing. I watch his game. He wasn't a top five player. You're Mr. Revisionist history. I'm so tired of the revisionist what history. What revisionist history? Stop it. What Paul revisionist George, history? Paul George didn't make a mistake. He did. He did He's not. He's sitting home right now. Instead, he could have come to L. A. and be with an agent. Superstar is more interested in Hollywood than he is with winning anything. Oh, we saw that it. this year. He was really? a terrible leader. Yes. How did we see that? We saw that. And, and you he sitting here saying here. they wouldn't have made the playoffs. They terrible. would have. They... No, they wouldn't have. When LeBron was here and they had a chance to win, look, they lost. They lost. With Paul George, you're acting like you said if Paul George was here. They would have been better equipped to withstand the absence, the injury of LeBron. And George would have held down the fort, and then LeBron would have stepped in. The morale wouldn't have been crushed because there wouldn't have been the Anthony Davis talk. You got your second star. George and LeBron would have been terrific together. And Paul they George. would not only have made the playoffs, they would still be playing right now. You're telling me Russell Westbrook is better to play with than LeBron James? Chris, you don't, you're is the that one, what you're telling you're me? You're the one who picked fit with that roster. Is you, that what well, you're no. telling me? You're the one who picked 53 wins. LeBron was going to win the MVP. I could go on and on and on about all the stuff you had with the roster that LeBron had. Are you then all telling of a sudden me, you're telling me that what, roster. What's that got to do with this? I'm just saying, you're saying you, you had already predicted all all these great things for the Lakers without Paul George. How right. did he make it would have been even greater How with Paul George. Because it would have been even greater so with Paul so George. So you said 53 wins without Paul George. They were going to win 65? Is that what you're saying they would have If Paul George was there, they're in the 50. That. I don't you, – you're just not following my logic. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're saying – I am I said – You said that LeBron didn't need him. No, he was going to I be never fit. said that. He was going to win never, the MVP and 53 that wins. That doesn't mean – I didn't predict him going to the finals. I didn't predict him winning the championship? You said all year, who are you afraid of in the Western Conference? Other than the, other than Golden State, who are you afraid of? That's You're all you arguing, kept saying. See, Rob, when I make a point, you argue something differently. I, having Paul George would have made them better. I never said they didn't need him. I never said they were a championship team without him. I said they were still a good team. And you put Paul George in there, and they're even better. So now, if Paul George gets there, maybe I would. I don't know what I would have predicted, but maybe I would have predicted they beat Golden State. Maybe I would have predicted they go to the finals. So that's got nothing. Me predicting they were going to win 53 without Paul George has nothing to do with this argument, this debate. Paul George would have stepped in and made them better. And he would have been on a better team than he's on right now. He has no chance to win a championship with that I team. I don't know how he you would have had a t- Chris, chance. He would have had a chance with LeBron. Three days ago, three days ago, he was going to the Western Conference Finals. Is that a championship? No, but that's a chance. That's my point. That's a chance to win a championship. How can you say that's not a chance? It's the same chance as every. That's like saying because you're in the NBA, you have a chance. No, it's not. If they're in the Western Conference Finals, they could have upset them. They wouldn't. Somebody could have got hurt. Nobody would have had a chance. You can't make it that you went from the Western Conference Finals to nothing. Let's say a player from every team better than them would have got hurt. That doesn't even make it. That makes no sense. You don't. You don't, you don't follow good logic. You you don't. When I make a statement, you argue something else. 
Me saying they would have got to the, they could have got to the conference finals. What was, is that saying they could have won a championship? No, no. But you're saying he would, didn't have a chance. He Philadelphia could get to the conference finals. I don't think they could win a championship. But it doesn't mean that he didn't have a chance. You, uh, it was just everybody funny. in the NBA has a chance if you want to define it that way. All I know is he would have been. You're telling me to answer this question, Rob. Is, is it better to play with Russell Westbrook or LeBron James? Russell Westbrook, that's what he picked. No, because I get he'd all rather that. be there. I get that you, he doesn't want to be under Le, the LeBron shadow and why, the nonsense. That's why, what he doesn't want. Then why did he sign off to play with LeBron in Cleveland if, if LeBron would have committed? Because he changed his mind. He realized what's going on with LeBron in Hollywood. Arguing all of the I other never all of the other projects. I'm just saying that's right, why he decided your not turn, to come to his hometown your turn and to, play since, with since, LeBron. Your turn to weigh in. Says Rob just goes on tangents I want you, for my I point. I want you during the break to listen to uh, Super Tramp's The Logical Song. 877-996-6369. Your turn to weigh in. Did last night prove that Paul George made a mistake by choosing OKC and Russell Westbrook over his hometown L.A. Lakers? I think Paul George made a mistake. Should have went to the Lakers. Rob disagrees. What say you? 877-99 on Fox. Let's start with GW in Cincinnati. What's happening, man? Welcome to the Odd Couple. What's going on, Chris? What's going on, Rob, man? We're great, man. Chris, unlike your partner, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and answer your question. And I'm going to be able to answer your question without delving off into the JFK assassination, the OJ trail, LeBron James, or why Tom Brady won't win next year. <laughs> of course you're right. Right now, I guarantee you that it's gone through Paul George's mind that I should have gone to L.A. And the scenario that you brought up about uh, when, when LeBron went down, he missed those 18 games, and and Paul George being able to sustain the team. Chris, this was one of my biggest problems with Luke Walton. Normally when a team loses a superstar or star, the other guys seem to step up. Luke Walton actually had young guys that didn't step up, and they didn't play with any energy. And I, I think that was probably went to their decision uh, why they let him go. But as far as Paul George is concerned, of course he made the wrong mistake. All right, we thanks for the call. You. Appreciate right, it. Good call, GW. Bad call. Let's go to Max in Georgia. <laughs> You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Max? It's a privilege talking to you guys. Always Th- a privilege. Thank you, bud. Thank you, brother. I wanted to give a shout-out real quick. Alex, Rob G., Maya, David, appreciate you guys as well. Um, first of all, Rob, you're definitely right on this one, like usual. Chris, I love you too, man, but – how uh, is Rob's he right? Calling you you, gotta, you gotta explain. Go ahead, this. Max. Go ahead. That's it. Well, Call well, Rob, logic. Rob's calling you out, holding you accountable to your 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 picks from the year about OKC going to the fi- uh, the Western Finals and, and LeBron and the Lakers win share to loss ratio. I love it. But I how does that passion. how does that answer, how does that prove I'm wrong about Paul George making this is, a mistake? This is how I think it proves it. He would have rather have stayed with Westbrook and the small market and the, the barbecue in OKC then go to the nice weather, the Hollywood, the, 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 the beautiful women in L.A. He'd rather stay with Westbrook, the situation he's got there, than go to the Blaine James drama situation. So yes. I'm all with Rob. No doubt, Max. He just he don't want the see. My, he don't want, my, he don't want, he want the nonsense. But my point was ba- – and that's included in basketball. But I don't want to hear about the barbecue and the friendship. And I'm saying basketball. Well, of friendship course it, doesn't matter. If, no, but I'm saying if he's happier in OKC, I'm fine with it. No, I, I'm just, I have no problem with a person making an individual season. That's why decision. I'm saying that's why it's just basketball wise. Sean from Sacramento, what's happening? Man, the one-on-one Fox Hoop champ and uh, the boat over here cooking with hot grease and a cast iron today, yeah. huh? You that's know right, it, man. man. Right that's out the right. right out the box. Hey, man, first and foremost, man, download the End of Parker podcast. You know what I'm saying? Heard Network out today. How much you paying um, this dude, This is my man. man right here. Get to the Sh- point, Sean. Sean, when I come up Get there to the, point. to the Bay Area, man, you got to drive no up. There's no way y'all didn't know each other I don't two know him. Ago. I don't know Sean. <laughs> All right, I don't know this dude, man, but yeah, I got you, man. You know, lemon pepper off top at the wing stop. That's Always right. Always usual. Sean, um, what's your point? <laughs> <laughs> so my point real quick, man, is first of all, Chris, man, I love you, man. I see your logic. You feel me? If they would have got Paul George, there wouldn't have been the whole hubbub with trying to get Anthony Davis in the middle of the season. But, I mean, you have to stick to the facts. Whether or not Paul George went there or not, 
the Lakers were a hot mess this year, man. So you can't really say that if this would have happened, if that would have happened, it would have been a better situation. And Paul George had a career year. You keep downplaying How, the yeah. How's that season. looking right Nobody now? Nobody did whether or not the playoffs were career. You know what that's he had a career year. Congratulations. Thanks, Sean. You're 100% you made second right. team All-NBA. It don't matter. Great he, job. He had a career year playing and there. And got which bounced means, in five. Which means it feels good to him being there and, and got playing. B- 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 bounced in five. Bye, Felicia. Who are you, Ain't Mason? Ain't it about winning? I thought it was all about winning, Mr. Parker. It, it, hey, winning is a sudden, good thing. Now, all of a sudden, you're taking consolation prizes. Hey, Joseph in uh, Stockton, California, you're on the Odd Couple, Fox Sports Radio. What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's How are you? Hey, so, big, 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 big time Laker fan right here, all right? And this is why uh, Paul George made a mistake going to uh, OKC or resigning with OKC. LeBron gets hurt in December. They were, uh, you know, I th- uh, the Lakers were number four in the West at that time. If LeBron goes out, Paul George is still able to keep that team afloat with LeBron out. LeBron ain't going to get no praise. Paul George would have got praise for keeping the team afloat, keeping them in at least seven in the West. Lakers are in the playoffs. Paul George is not going to have an MVP type of season with that team, but he's in the playoffs, and I believe that they are advancing to the second round. What do you guys think? I'm with you, man. I don't I'm see that you. at all. I think next to LeBron, George would have been great. He would have been fantastic. He was even better duo, without being He with was them. great. No, he was great. The duo, though, I- I'm telling you a LeBron James-Paul George duo is better than a LeBr- uh, Paul George-Russell Westbrook duo. And I don't see how anybody can argue that. That's all the brother's saying, plus the sunshine. All right, after a third straight first-round playoff exit, is it time for the Thunder to consider trading Russell Westbrook? We're bringing in one of our favorite guests, NBA champion, FS1 NBA analyst, Mr. Eddie House. What's happening, brother? What's going on? Happy hump day, fellas. That's Thank right. Thank you, my oh, man. Yeah. Thank you. Well, look, these playoffs have been great, but none greater than what we saw last night. And I want to ask you, Damian Lillard is taking it to another level Has he risen from being a star to a superstar right before our eyes? Yeah, we we we're seeing it right now. You 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 don't want to be a prisoner of the moment, but it's really not being a prisoner of a moment. I've been around basketball long enough, and I've seen guys in the playoffs figure out that they 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 go from thinking that they are that guy to like I know I'm that guy, and that's what we're looking at right now with with Dame. He going into the building knowing like I'm the I, I feel like I'm the best cat on the court and can't nobody fade me and that's how he feel and you see him he's comfortable in everything that he does I mean that was a, a phenomenal series for him and I'm talking about a, a, a fantastic performance the perfor- the way he played like he never got rattled and it seemed like the calmer he was the more rattled it looked like okay see and, and come up and more of them coming apart we seen the more that Portland was calm not, not, Eddie, help me out. How many game-winning shots did you make in your career? Like, you know, to win the game and walk a walk-off shot. Do you know? Uh, I walk a one, one of them. One okay. of them. Do you remember? Give uh, me the moment. Against the, the, against the Celtics. It was against Celtics. High pick and roll. Marcus Banks guard me. Uh, Elton Brand sets the pick and roll. I go off to the right elbow, pull up, hit it, draws. Was, was hmm. it? Was it? Uh, you guys were down, or was it a tie score? I don't remember that. Okay. I don't. I, I don't remember that. Okay. I want to ask you this. Only the only difference. Because I wanted, I wanted to find out about the mindset when it is a tie game and you know even if I miss the shot, it's going to overtime compared to being down, you know, where you need to make the shot in order to win the game. Is there, is there any different I don't mindset? Think a, I don't think there's a difference. I think you're raising up to knock them down either way. I don't think you're looking in your head like, okay, I got a safety net. If I miss this, no, nobody ever goes shoot, going into a play, going into anything that you're doing. They're thinking like, well, if I miss, no, there is no if I, it's, I'm about to make this. And then you deal with if you miss afterwards. But there's no, there's no thought process of, okay, I feel better taking this shot because I know that if I miss it, we go into overtime. Nah, not, at least not for me. I don't know if for anybody yeah, else. No, I'm just asking. Else. I always think that knowing that you're not going to lose the game is not the same pressure as if I don't make this, you know what I mean? I'm going to let everybody down. I don't, I'm just I don't saying, think I think you look, I don't think you look at it as pressure. Like I don't think you. I think that's kind of overanalyzing. I think at the end of the day, you're looking like I got to make this shot. 
I don't think that I don't. I know I never have. Okay, I, yeah, I've never, I'm asking you because you played in the big games. I didn't. Yeah, no, I, ne- I never. I, you never think that. I mean, the shot I hit against uh, against the Lakers in the finals to finally give us a lead when we were coming back. I didn't go up with that saying like, "Well, damn, if I miss this, we got all this game left." I went up like, "I'm about to knock this in, give us this lead, and we ain't gonna look back." You know, and, and like that's that's. I think that's everybody's mindset. Nobody nobody thinks of the failure. Nobody works out and thinks of the missing shot. We we just think of, we, we always envision making it, and and that's all you think. You don't think ever of failure. Now, Eddie, people are wondering what's next for Oklahoma City. Some have even thrown out the idea that maybe they need to consider trading Russell Westbrook. What are your thoughts on that? Or if you think they should keep him, how do you build around him and try to get this team to a championship level? Well, first, let me let me say this. I You know how much I've been defending Russ. I think Russ had one of the poorest series um, besides the, the – what was the game four? Yeah, uh, he besides, had that one great game, right. Yeah, besides that game, I mean, he was – I mean, uh, this is the thing. What, what, he made – the, the triple-double looks nice, but if it's – Failed like in the regular season, he did it for them to win. He the, the triple doubles racked up in the wins. These triple doubles aren't racking up in the wins in the playoffs, so they've become an empty stat in the playoffs. I think he he can't be the guy taking the most shots. And I also think they have to figure out is is uh is is Billy Donovan the guy for them? Because um, he he's not gonna. And I don't think uh, Scott Brooks was a good coach too. I don't think either of them told Russ what needed to be told to him. Is that fair? I think that is fair. I think also, I don't think, because at at, at the end of that game, there's no way they up 15. Then they was up seven with like right. two minutes, three minutes. Then there, was, there was no, there was two, they they had no like awareness of time, clock, right. uh, time, situation, or, or any of that. Um, they you know, were come playing down like it was shot. the second quarter. Yeah, they come down rushing shots. Um, uh, turning the ball over, and I think that goes back to coaching, where you have to look like, hey, why he don't, why doesn't he slow it down? You know, hey, he has to call out something. That as much as you are given, I think this is a discussion that has to happen. As much as he's given Russ the freedom, Russ has shown us that at, at, at times he's not doing well with that, with that freedom, not being responsible with that freedom, and it, and it, it comes back to cost him. So you got to look at the coach holding him accountable. Also, Russ, Russ has to take a hard look in the mirror uh, because. He's definitely to blame for that. You know, miss shots, make shots. I'm talking about clock management, how he went about handling the end of that game. I mean, I was yelling at the screen. Even though they did go to Paul George, and he missed three out of four free throws, and then he also turned the ball over. I just felt that was the best thing for them to do is constantly play through them, and I think they just went away from that. So moving forward, to answer your question, I think everything is on you. If you say Presti, yeah, I think your job is on the line, number one, because your cap strapped over there. So you have to start looking at how do you get out of this situation and save face and either save your job or bow out gracefully. Yeah, wow. That's that's good stuff. I, I agree. Let's go. Uh, it's the I Couple. We're joined by NBA champion Eddie House. Eddie, what about Denver? Uh Denver got off. They, they, you know, they had that great season. Uh, played so well at home all year. They lose game one. Most people are like, "See, told you they're not goody. They're not good enough. They're not ready. They got a lot of young guys who haven't been through it. And all they did was fight their way back. And now they're up three games to two with a chance to uh, uh, advance. What do you think uh, about Denver and what they were able to do? Because that losing of game one at home could have uh, wrecked a lot of team seasons." Yeah, and that's the great thing also about being young is that you don't know any better. So they they out there just balling. They don't care about anything else. They whatever happened, that game's over with. They believe that they're the best team in the league, and you see it. And they have no, they don't know anything else except that. Like, hey, we we are the best, and that's how they play. And they've been like that all year. They're they're a young team with extreme talent, but then their belief in themselves is even more. So then I think the talent that they have, which pushes everything over, like, you know, confidence is the, is the most important thing in basketball and every in, in life in general, you got to have confidence in what you're doing to be successful. Uh, uh, I look at, I look at a team like Denver and I, I, I did, I've been doing them like Milwaukee all year long. Like, okay, man. Well, I don't believe it. I don't, no. but they make it, they're slowly making me believers. I mean, and they win the series, move forward. Same thing with Milwaukee. Yeah, all you could do is get, I give them credit. I, but then again, I'm, I'm in the back of my mind like, I don't know if I fully trust it, though. You know, I don't know if I fully trust So they got to keep proving it over and over until they finally uh, burn it into my brain that, hey, we are something to reckon with. But right now, I'm, it's, it's like I have believe and I have don't. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I know because they haven't been there and been down that road. 
But I, the only reason I brought it up was because they lost game one and it looked like they could have folded and panicked, and they didn't do it. And no, they, they, you know, I just thought they're a young, young team and, and don't have any fear. You know, don't know any better. Eddie, we got about a minute left. Uh, I haven't been this excited about the second round matchups in the East, Ooh, especially yeah. in Amazing the Wild. Games, yep. Who do you like in each uh, matchup and why? Well, I'm a, I, you know, I, I bleed green, so I'm going to go with the Celtics because I think that, that they have. Is that your heart or your head talking? <laughs> I, I think that my heart and my head, I think they'll have the, even as great as Giannis is, I think the best closer on the floor will be Kyrie. And I think if you go roster to roster, matchup, who can win the most matchups, who can win their individual battles and who can make plays for themselves and other, I think Celtics have more of those players than Milwaukee does. Okay, what about Philly-Toronto? I, I got Toronto for the same reason. It all comes down to who can win your matchups. And, and that's what I look at. You know, player, you know everybody's plays, and it's going to come down to a pick and roll, some sort of ISO. Who can make plays for their self and make plays for the other and win their battle? And, I, and that's, that's how I look at teams in the playoffs. Who has the roster that can outdo the other roster? All right. It's Eddie. the great Eddie House, Always the NBA a pleasure. champion, FS1 sure. analyst. Thanks, brother. We appreciate the knowledge. Yes, sir. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. All yep. right, my man.